two years. They have two children, a son in Little Rock and a daughter in Virginia. Their four beautiful granddaughters are their pride of their joy and joy. Following college, they lived in Iowa for 11 years. For the past 38 years, they have resided in Bentonville, Arkansas. Larry had several different jobs through the years. He likes his current one the best, retirement. Yeah, we all like that job, don't we? They enjoy traveling and hope to visit their last of the 50 states, Alaska, in the near future. They became sojourners in 2013 and feel like they are living their dream. Larry. First of all, I want to say how disappointed I am in uh, the three speakers that were here Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. They were all preachers. And I base my wardrobe on the fact that they were probably going to wear a sport coat. So I cram a little RV closet with my sport coat to bring down here to wear, and they didn't wear theirs. So I didn't wear mine. If you want to see it, you can drop by my trailer anytime. Well, you're probably wondering how in the world I got into this particular job. It was back in August when my wife and I were uh, traveling to the northwest and uh, we spent a couple of days in DeSmet. Uh-oh. Ronnie, help me out. Oh, there it is. Okay. We spent a couple of days in DeSmet, South Dakota. We visited the home place of Ma and Paul Ingalls and saw their burial place. And uh, one afternoon we decided we wanted something, uh, a snack. And so we stopped at one of two of the, uh, one of two of the restaurants in DeSmet, South Dakota. This was the five-star restaurant, <laughs> okay? And uh, we were in the drive through of the Dairy Queen when suddenly my truck screen showed me that I was getting a call from Mike Huddleston. Well, I answered and we had our typical how are you conversation. And then he began to tell me about the situation where his key speaker was having to drop out the first week because of some health issues. And he was looking for four men to fill those four days uh, speaking. Well, before I would answer yes or no, I had a couple of questions from Mike, and they, I think they were probably pretty similar to the questions that Nadine had when Mike asked her to marry him. <laughs> How many have you asked? <laughs> and how many said no? Well, after I saw the list of those who said yes, who felt sorry for Mike, I began to see a pattern about how he went about finding these replacements. And I said, Mike, who have you got lined up so far? He said, well, a guy named Chris Vodakovich. 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 Chris. So he found him. And so I figured what Mike had done. He went through the active sojourn directory <laughs> alphabetically, and he didn't find his first yes until he got to the V's. <laughs> and then he went to Nadine and he says, what am I going to do? I only found one yes, and I've been all the way through the directory. And she said, well, Mike, go back through the directory. This time, go alphabetically by their first name. 
And he says, oh, that's a great idea. They give me at least 26 more possibilities. <laughs> so he starts calling Orville and Bobby and Charles and David, and he gets all the way down to the L's, and he hit the jackpot. <laughs> he found Larry Birch. He found Larry Crone. I don't know what happened to Larry Johnson. He's a rocket scientist. And you don't have to be a rocket scientist to do this job. And then he found Larry Little. And let me tell you, Larry Shelton, you better be glad Larry Little said yes because your name was coming up next. <laughs> well, after, <clears throat> after I talked to Mike, I got to wondering, how did Mike's call get through to me? Because, you see, I thought in his profile I had clicked block this call. <laughs> and so I called, I called AT&T and I said, look, I said, I don't think the block this caller feature is working on my phone. And uh, I said, I, I got a call from someone I thought I had blocked. And I keep getting these calls from people telling me my warranty is about to run out on my vehicle, and I know I blocked them. And she says, well, there is a little glitch in our iPhones, but we got a simple fix. I said, okay, tell me what it is. She said, well, go to the contact person that you want to block. Change their first name to Spam. <laughs> Change their last name to risk. And then when they call, you'll see you're getting a spam risk call. Now I said, I told the lady, I said, well, that's all in good, but when they call, I still see their picture. And I know who it is. And she said, well, let me send you a stock photo. So now when when Mike calls, I know I'm getting a spam risk call, and I know I don't have to answer it. Now, Bob Littlejohn is the chairman of the workshop next year. If he is in your contact list, you may want to go ahead and make those changes now. But so much for the call from Mike. I'll have to admit, most of what I just told you is not true. <laughs> now, we did go to DeSmith, South Dakota. We did go to the Dairy Queen. Barbara got a chocolate shake, and I got a Snickers blizzard. Now, the two questions may have been true. I'm not sure, Nadine, but anyway. The rest of it, totally false, just for fun. But I will tell you something that is true. I love sojourning. My wife and I found out about the sojourning mission back in the late 1980s while we were attending the Tulsa Soul Winning Workshop in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Now that I understand a little bit more about the sojourner mission, I realized that there were some sojourners there doing a promotional how many, of you, how many of you found out about sojourning through a promotional? Raise your hand. All right. So, tomorrow morning, when you go sign up, there's a whole board called promotionals. And remember, folks, we can't reproduce. We have to recruit. Okay? So, sign up for those promotionals. And I didn't know when we received that little brochure about sojourning, that it would be 27 years later before we became sojourners. Come on. That's all right, brother. Come on. In 2013, <clears throat> I meant to get this out first. <laughs> In 2013, my wife and I had the privilege of going on our very first sojourn to West Kentucky Youth Camp in Marion, Kentucky. 
The team consisted of John and Ellen Lucas, Dale and Stella Porter, Ralph Burris, and Barbara and I. Barbara, of course, was paired with the ladies. You know, they went and did cleaning. And I was paired with Ralph Burris, who at the time was 83 years old. I'm 64, and I got to work with a guy that's almost 20 years older than me, and he worked me like a dog. <laughs> Ralph Burris became my hero. He and his wife began sojourning back in 1999. In 2005, they had to discontinue sojourning because his wife had some health issues. She later passed away, and Ralph resumed sojourning as a single in 2011 at the age of 81. Brother Burris, excuse me. Oh, that's Brother Burris working me like a dog. Uh, Brother Burris has been preaching the gospel for 73 years. And to this day, he still teaches two Bible classes a week and fills in preaching whenever he's needed. On that first sojourn, I knew that I'd met someone who got their strength from the ancient words. As he served his God of endurance. Well, four years later, I signed up to be a team leader at Northeastern Ohio Christian Youth Camp. Leroy, Leroy and Peggy Bar Toothman, excuse, Leroy and Peggy Toothman were there. They began sojourning in 1998. And a few days before the sojourn, I received a call from Ralph Burris asking if I had any room for him. I had one, one spot left for a, for a rig, and I said, Ralph, come on, I'd love to work with you again. I hung up, and I started doing the math. I see 83, 4 years, 84, 85, 87 years old, and he's pulling his rig to Ohio to work on a sojourn. When he got there, I asked him, Ralph, I said, I've got this one spot between these two rigs. Would you like for me to back your rig in? He said, yes, if you don't mind. So I got in his pickup truck, and I, I, I had to pull forward a little bit, and I barely touched the brake pedal, and the, tire, the, the brakes on that trailer locked up immediately, and I was dragging it through gravel. And so I, I started backing it up. I barely touched the brake pedal, and then the tire brakes would lock up. I back up, well, I finally got it in there. I got out of the truck and I said, Ralph, I think your brake controller said a little high. He said, oh, no. He said, I like it that way. When I come off them interstates, I want to make sure I stop on the exit ramps. <laughs> so, if you see any skid marks on any exit ramps across America, Ralph Burris may have been there. In 2021, I was a co-team leader with uh, Greg Risner at Sholo, Arizona in the, at the High Country Church of Christ. Bobby and Phyllis Bracken were there. Bobby was there dealing with cancer. He wasn't feeling well. He could work maybe a half a day. But he got his strength from these ancient words as he worked for a God of endurance. And guess who else was there? You guessed Ralph Burris, age 91. Now, this isn't a place for young people to work. We're at 6,300 feet elevation. The air is getting a little bit thin. But here was Ralph. Here was Ralph dragging tree limbs down this rocky hillside and throwing them on a pile at the bottom to be hauled away. And he was doing other construction work as well. And talking to Ralph just a few weeks ago, he told me this. I've already got three sojourns I want to go to in 2023. 
at the age of 93. Folks, he gets his strength from these ancient words. You know, Ralph's not only my only hero that I've had the privilege of working with over the past several years because many have demonstrated strength and endurance as they serve their God of endurance. I call them veterans of the Lord's army. You know, I'm glad we were able to honor our men and women who served in our country last Sunday at the tea. But I want to honor three groups this morning that are my heroes who serve in the Lord's army. The first group I want to recognize are those who are 80 years of age or older. Would you please stand? 80 years of age or older. And Krista Dobbs is 95. She drove all the way from Lubbock, Texas to here, and her kids are as mad as they can be. But they're my heroes. The next group are those who are single, those who have lost their spouse, or they never married, or for whatever reason, you are, are single, but yet you go by yourself, pulling your own rig, driving your own rig, going to these sojourns all over the country. If you're a man, you have to sometimes play on the women's team in hand and foot. If you're a woman, you have to play on the men's team. I mean, you go through a lot. But if you're single and you're here today, you're my hero. Would you stand? I want to honor you. And then my third group are those who have or are battling serious health issues. Those who are battling cancer, those who are cancer free now, those who have body parts that you weren't born with. <laughs> you're, my, you're my heroes. Because you don't use that as an excuse not to go and serve your Lord. Would you stand? Thank you so much for your service. I want to share with you a few other examples of my heroes in the Lord's army. In 2013, um, this was our second soldier in that year of our first year. We were green dots. And we went to uh, Carpenter Place up in Wichita, Kansas. And there in uh, the middle is Robert and Virginia Taylor. Robert and Virginia sort of took us under their wing. Robert was undergoing cancer treatments at the time. He even had to go to the hospital while we were on the sojourn. But that didn't keep him home. Ron and Lena, Ron and Lena Grimes Did I tell you I get emotional? I couldn't remember if I mentioned that or not. Ron Grimes battling Alzheimer's, but yet he didn't use that as an excuse to stay at home. Dwayne Brown, a single, 
His wife had passed away. They didn't keep him home because he wanted to serve his God of endurance. 2014, Cherokee Children's Home. Ch- ch- home for Children, I should say. Jim and Ernie Green. They're right there. They're in their 80s. Began sojourning in 1991. Bobby Proctor, he was going through cancer treatments. He was in and out of MD Anderson, also still working a job, but he was going on sojourns. And I wish Jerry Don and Helen Sanders had been here because I was going to harass her about her apron. <laughs> Hope she watches it on YouTube. Hi, Helen. Mountain States Children's Home, 2014. There's Clyde and Carolyn Estes. They're in their 80s. I still visualize or have a visual of Carolyn sitting Indian style out in the sun on the ground pulling weeds. And I remember a statement that Clyde told me while we were there. He said, I'm just a retired banker. I don't have any carpentry skills. I don't have any electrical skills, but I make a good gopher. He said, if you need something, I'll go get it for you. If you want me to hold something, I'll hold it for you. But because he didn't have any skills, didn't say, well, I can't serve in sojourning. But he did. Because he got his strength to do that from these ancient words as he served. A God of endurance. In 2015, Palmetto Bible Camp, a great camp. He was in his 80s. Walt and Marge Hamilton began sojourning in 1996. And I remember Marge saying their goal was to do 100 sojourns. 2016, back at uh, Western Kentucky Youth Camp, Dale and Stella Porter now in their 80s. They began sojourning in 1996. And Dale was always saying, every time I worked with him, he said, well, this is probably going to be my last sojourn. <laughs> but Stella brought me to si- aside that, that sojourn and she said, you know, we may be getting close to the end. We had a, we had a flat coming down. Dale was able to, to get the tire changed but he just didn't have the strength to lift the tire up into the pickup. Did you turn around and go home? I came and worked the soldier. 2016, back at Cherokee Home for Children. Guess what? There's old Jim and Ernie Green again. There's Pat and Dudley Cash in their 80s. They began sojourning in 1994. Did they use their age as an excuse to stay at home? No, because they got their strength from the ancient words as they served their God of endurance. 2017, Flaming Pine Youth Camp. Larry and Hallie Johnson, they'd been sojourning for 20 years By the way, that's him right there. At this sojourn, Larry's health, and by the way, he's the rocket scientist. He's the one who, during his working career, launched rockets, launched rockets. His mind was still good. He was using a cane. His body was beginning to fail. But that wasn't an excuse to drive from Texas all the way up to northern Minnesota, almost into Canada, to work on a soldier. And of course, there was Ron Grimes, still battling Alzheimer's. But you know what? You take a man who's got a good mind and a weak body, putting with a man with a strong body, and a weak mind. 
and then we'll go back. Amen. 2019, Camp Yam Hill, Meredith Gower. He was there, he was battling cancer. They had to leave that sojourn to go up to his son's house in Washington State because he just didn't have the strength to continue working there at Camp Yam Hill. Yam Hill. He knew when he left Arizona, he had cancer. But that didn't keep him home. He went. Norman Deeney Smith began sojourning in 1998. Delbert and Helen Tao, Pete and Pat Rollins, in their 80s, serving their God of endurance. At Columbia Christian School up in Portland, Oregon, Rex and Pat Farnsworth began in 1996. Pete and Pat Rollins in their 80s. Pat even celebrated her 86th birthday on that sojourn. Getting her strength from these ancient words, serving her God of endurance. Twenty twenty Southern Christian Home in Moralton, Arkansas. Ralph and Kathleen Edgerson began sojourning in 1993. David and Helen Wade, Jim and Gloria Heath, I'm not sure if they were in the 80s yet, but they were getting close. <laughs> Let me tell you, they were getting close. And of course, there's Dwayne Brown again, single, looking old, not in his 80s yet, but he was there. Getting their strength from the ancient words, serving a God of endurance. 2021 Mobile Christian School, Dope Jones, began sojourning in 1997. Gerald and Ann Holcomb, Jerry and Dorothy Eskew, in their 80s, serving their God of endurance as they got their strength from these ancient words. 2021 Crowley's Christian College, Crowley's Ridge College, I'm sorry. Philip Johnson, he was almost 80. His wife was not able to come with him on that sojourn. He drove all by himself from Rome, Texas, all the way up to northeast Arkansas, pulling his trailer, working in 90 to 100 degree temperatures, and also one of my other heroes, a single, and she was a green dot, Pam Taylor, built her own RV van, and she arrived yesterday. Thank you, Pam, for coming. But they're my heroes because they don't use their age or the fact that they're single as an excuse as to why they can't serve their God of endurance. 2022, Maywood Christian Camp, David and Helen Wade in their 80s. Now, I know David's in his 80s. I think he married a younger woman. <laughs> and here was Eddie and Brenda Cox. They were widowed singles who married, and for you green dots, if a single sojourner marries another single sojourner, we call them retreads. Okay. So as I was looking at this picture, I said, Look at these two young couples serving as bookends to these ancient words. <laughs> and believe me, they had plenty of ancient words to tell us and inspire us with. 2022, Crowley's Ridge Academy. Harold and Edith Long began sojourning in 1997. Jerry and Dorothy Eskew in their 80s. Oral Hill, who is not in this picture, but has trouble getting around. But not an excuse to stay at home. He sat down and he pulled hard drives out of computers while we we're there on that sojourn. And Sally, she, she, she could paint up a storm or clean up a storm or whatever. But anyway, singles were there. Bobby Nix, Sally Carrico, my heroes. Because they get their strength from these ancient words as they serve. A God of endurance. Yeah. Which brings me to 
to Potter's Children's Home. <laughs> Again, Dave and Helen Wade were there, Jim and Gloria Heath. Now, I know they're in their 80s now, okay? And we have singles, Julie Price and Connie Barnes Gibson. Drove there by themselves. Didn't have any help driving. But they came anyway, and they worked on this sojourn because they get their strength from these ancient words as they serve their living God. Which now brings me to these two men. These are my new heroes. Jim Heath and Jerry Eskew. Both serving as team leaders in their 80s. So fellas, don't tell me that you're too old to be a team leader. Because these men do it. Now, most of you don't know this, but Jim Heath and Jerry Eskew played on the 1959 Harding College football team together. It was the first college football team Harding had since they disbanded back in the 1930s. Uh, I did a little research on that. Uh, Harding had a football team back in the 20s and the 30s, and the Depression kind of shut them down. But that, fir those fir that first football team that Harding had they would play small colleges and high schools <laughs> in football. <laughs> and they also went up to Fayetteville to play the freshman Arkansas Razorback team and got beat 73 to nothing. <laughs> now, Jim and Jerry, does that sound like some of y'all's scores? <laughs> Jerry says yes. Okay. Now, both of these men grew up as young men, and they, they both became football coaches. And I believe that they brought some of those football coaching skills over into sojourning. For instance, Jerry Eskew, he likes to recruit his team members. I think Jerry may have gone to the University of Alabama and went to Nick Saban's seminar on how to recruit <laughs> because, because he only takes five-star recruits, okay? The only way I was able to go on a sojourn there is I had to go on as a walk-on. I was unrecruited. Now, Jim Heath, he takes a little different approach. He told me on a sojourn recently, he said, you know, when I was coaching, I liked to go to those small schools that were struggling with their football program, and I liked to build them up into strong, powerful football uh, teams. So while Jim is over here getting the five-star recruits, I'm uh, sorry, Jerry, getting the five-star recruits, Jim is over here getting the three- and four-star recruits but he's able to build them into powerful, productive sojourner teams. Now, I think Jim would still like for us to get up every morning and run sprints and do the bleachers. <laughs> but he doesn't make us do that, but he does make us do two a days. We have to work in the morning and we have to work in the afternoon. So he's still got that football stuff in him. But you know, no matter what our age or our physical condition, we all have our battle scars. Whether it be, here we go, <laughs> a pacemaker, a defibrillator, stents, arthritis, bursitis, bronchitis, tendonitis, diabetes, where we've had hip replacement, shoulder replacement, metal in our knees, rods in our legs, screws in our feet, whether we've had COVID, cancer, or COPD. I think I got behind. or COPD. You remember when we were young? We used to put the pedal to the metal. Yeah, now we put the metal to the pedal. <laughs> you know, even our medicine cabinets look like a ceiling. 
Even our medicine cabinet looks like a CVS pharmacy. <laughs> but we still get our strength from his ancient words as we serve a God of endurance. How else will we be able to change a flat tire or deal with broken trailer parts or missing trailer parts? <laughs> Or have the strength and the patience to, that it takes to make or put sheets on an RV mattress. How many of you have had one of these or have one of these? My guess is when you were a teenager, you were good at that game called Twister. Twister. <laughs> Because that's kind of what you look like trying to put a sheet on one of them beds, let me guarantee you. But you know the Apostle Paul, I'm going to read this, some of you may not can see it, but Apostle Paul had it rough too. He wrote in 2 Corinthians 11, 24 through 28, he said, Five times I received from the Jews the forty lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. I've been constantly on the move. I've been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my own countrymen, in danger from Gentiles, in danger in the city, in danger in the country, in danger at sea, in danger from false brothers. I've labored and toiled and often gone without sleep. I've known hunger and thirst and have often gone without food. I've been cold and naked. Besides everything else, I've faced the daily pressure of my concern for all the churches. Now, if Paul had lived in our day and had been a soldier, he may have written to the church in Corinth, Mississippi, <laughs> what's this? No, 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 we don't go there yet. Five times I've had flats or blowouts. Three times I ran out of gas. One night, I spent broken down on the side of the road. Once, my rig was struck by lightning. I've been in danger from high water, hail, high winds. I've labored and toiled and gone, often gone without sleep. I've known hunger and thirst, but not very often. I've been, I've been cold and hot and sometimes missed morning or afternoon break. And besides everything else, I face the daily pressure of making it to the next sojourn on time. I want to close this morning with an Old Testament story that I believe demonstrates the strength and endurance that we all need as we face various trials as sojourners. It's the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I'm getting close to running out of time, but bear with me as I tell you this quick story about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. My wife and I taught a third and fourth grade training class for girls and boys on Wednesday night for 25 years. She taught the girls, it was called Buds to Blossoms, and I taught the boys called Timothy class, and I taught them how to lead singing, how to read scripture, how to make a talk, all those things. But once a month, we would have Bible quiz night. And so on this particular night, I divided the boys up into two teams, and I would give them a Bible question. I said to this team, who were the three men who were thrown into the fiery furnace? And so they go, oh, and they had to get together. Oh, it was Shadrach, Meshach, and oh, who was that other guy? Shadrach, Meshach. And they were taking a little bit too much time, so I always went up five, four, three, you know, they run out of time. And one little boy shouts out, Shadrach, Meshach, and Radio Shack. <laughs> well, I didn't say close enough. But uh, anyway, I still remember that story. But you remember, following the interpretation of King Nebuchadnezzar's first dream, Daniel was promoted to a very high position. And at Daniel's request, the king appointed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego as administrators over the province of Babylon. And then we read that King Nebuchadnezzar made 
a gold, image of gold 90 feet high and 9 feet wide. And the people were instructed that when you hear the sound of all kinds of music, they were to fall down and worship the image of God or be thrown into a blazing furnace. Well, it was brought to the attention of the king that there were some Jews whom he said over the affairs of his country who paid no attention to him. In Daniel, Daniel chapter 3, Starting verse 13, we read, Furious with rage, Nebuchadnezzar summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these men were brought before the king, and Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold I have set up? And now it's almost like he's giving them a second chance. He said, now when you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, the zither, the lyre, the harp, the pipes, and all kinds of music, if you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into the blazing furnace. Then, what God will be able to rescue from my hand? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to save us from it. And he will rescue us from your hand, O king. But even if he does not, we want you to know, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold that you have set up. At that response, the king became furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And he threw them into the fiery furnace. He had it heated seven times hotter than normal. And then we read in, starting verse 24. Then King Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement and asked his advisors, weren't there three men that we tied and threw into the fire? He said, and they said, certainly, O king. And he replied, look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed, and the fourth looks like the sons of God. These men were in that furnace with a God of endurance. Our Sunday school teacher originally said these men were strolling through adversity. Strolling through adversity. And that's what we do as sojourners. Whether it be health issues or family matters or problems with our rigs, as we stroll through adversity, we gain strength from these ancient words as we serve our God of endurance. Join with me as we sing these words. Holy words long preserved for our Lord.
Thank you, Larry. You know, when the speaker I had for the first week had to bow out because of sickness, uh, COVID actually related, and uh, I said, what am I going to do? So I said, you know, we got a lot of good speakers in, in the Sojourners. So I did just start calling around. I did go through the... I, you know, I, said, I said, yeah, he'll be a good one, and he'll be a good one, and he'll be a good one. And plus, we've got some new people here that come on board. And when I called them, just like that, some good men stepped up because of the ancient words. Right. Uh, I want to say something to you. Uh, this is the first week. It's about over with. Uh, start next week, you're going to see Bob Littlejohn's face up here. He'll be kind of taking over and, and guiding the workshop. That's the way we work it. You know, I was the first, third year guy, which means I'm current. The other two kind of shadow you and follow you and keep you out of trouble. And then, uh, so then the second guy takes over for the second week of the sojourn. And then the third guy, Chris, moves up. I mean, the first guy, Chris, moves up to take his spot. So Chris will have the workshop in 2024. So that's who you're going to see up here next week. You might see me at the end to uh, thank an awful lot of people that made this workshop possible. Amen. have something I need to read from uh, Barbara Shelton. It's important, so listen to it. Dear Sojourners, there is always an opportunity for improvements. Posture is extremely important for seniors. If you see Charles Shelton and he is bent over or moving in an ungainly manner, please remind him to keep his chin up, shoulders back, and face the world with Christian pride. Barbara Shelton. <laughs> All right, let's go to lunch. Hold on. Whoa. Oh, one more thing? Okay. Who's this? Oh, the uh, 